my friend and I always used to walk through this wonderful, spacious park when we were younger. It was full of tall trees, and it was so nicely maintained. In this large park, there was this abandoned mansion. I can't really say how long it's been there, but on that day, the front door of the mansion was wide open. The two of us decided to go check out and see what's inside the place. As we inched through the door, the very first thing we noticed was that the mansion's floor was littered with crumpled up pieces of paper. We looked at each other and observed that there was no furniture in this place. There was nothing except for those little wrinkled up balls of paper. The mansion had six rooms on its main floor, and every room we entered bore more and more scrunched up pieces of paper. We decided to open one of those balls of paper to see what's inside. Our curiosity got the better of us. I picked up a single wrinkled piece, and my friend picked up another. I unfolded my paper, smoothing out its bends and dents. At that moment, it was almost as if a piece of rainbow emerged before our eyes, and I was suddenly standing next to a large window in one of the upstairs rooms of the house. I was looking outside into the large park, and when I looked down at the piece of paper I held, it read, Look outside, the large window that oversees the park in the upstairs parlor. I dropped the piece of paper, and it fluttered gracefully to the ground. Meanwhile, I stared at my open hands in a bout of horror. I felt so dazed and utterly perplexed. I found my way downstairs and I met up with my friend. He was in the kitchen, sitting at a round table that hadn't been there before. Where did that come from? I wondered. As my friend sat there, he stared at his open paper and reread the words several times before he looked up at me and turned the page my way. And it said, Go to the kitchen and sit at the round table. We both stared at each other for a few minutes vaguely afraid. But then, we began to chuckle. Within seconds, we were laughing our heads off, marveling at our newfound game. We could hardly believe what had just happened. But being as young as we both were, the mystery was endlessly exciting. We decided again to open up another scrunched up piece of paper. As we opened up the crumpled papers on the floor, we experienced a sudden flash of rainbow colors. But this time, I ended up lying down in a field behind the mansion. When I peered onto the paper in my right hand, it read, Lie down in the field behind the mansion. I giggled uncomfortably. After a few minutes of running around the house, I found my friend collecting multiple paper balls in his arms eager to experience more of these strange, exciting phenomena. We both got this gist of what was happening at this point. We had no idea how it was possible, but we decided to have more fun with it. The supernatural always had a way of captivating our hearts. After a few more run-throughs with these strange mini-teleportation devices, we began to feel apprehensive. I wondered if, at one point, I'd be in a place somewhere I didn't want to be at, or be made to do something I wouldn't enjoy. We continued, though. Minute after minute, we unfolded many papers and traveled through bedrooms, closets, the trees. But then, after having been on the roof of this mansion, I stood before my friend. He was dead on the living room floor. However, I didn't scream. I couldn't. Murder him, I read on this crumpled page, as I felt a surge of vomit and bile rising into my throat. Nothing came out, though. But the sickness in my throat spread to my stomach, my head, and my heart. I didn't know what to do. At this point, I began to scream and shout, praying to God for this all to be a nightmare. I wanted it to go away. I wanted to rewind our day and be outside again together, walking underneath those trees. All I could do now was hide his body in a cupboard. 
I willed myself to be calm, and I hesitantly unfolded another piece of paper in hopes that the problem would correct itself. Once again, I saw the colors of the rainbow, and I found myself standing behind a tree several meters away from the house. Within a few instants, I could clearly see the front door. I saw both myself and my friend walking through that door. I began to wonder if I had died or if I had had some weird out-of-body experience. As I looked at the sheet in my hand, and the only words sprawled upon it were, Time will repeat itself, and a paradox will take place, and it will be allowed. This gave me an idea. In my pocket remained the paper that made me kill my friend. Without looking at it, I crumpled it back up. I then quietly followed my other self, who had separated from my friend as he explored the rooms of the house. As I crept behind him, he turned around very suddenly. Before he could utter a syllable, I forced the paper in front of my eyes, and in a flash of rainbow colors, I was able to kill my other self. The loss of time allowed me to take over my dead self's place in this world, and also because of the fact that it was allowed to happen, as it was written on that second piece of paper that I had on me, which reversed time. It must have had control over the time paradoxes, which made me now the new alive and present of my other dead self. I hit my lip, bleeding other dead self in the cupboard in the upstairs bathroom to rot. To my great relief, I heard my friend call my name from the downstairs. My friend, who managed to stay alive and well, my best friend. When I went downstairs, he greeted me excitedly, smiling childishly, and being blissfully unaware of the situation. I pretended that nothing had happened. In a heartbeat, I then told him that the house creeped me out and that I would feel much better if we left. After that day, we never went near that mansion again. I don't know if anyone saw or heard about anything that happened between us, but I recently heard from another friend of mine that that house had been demolished. And I can tell you with great certainty that while this news is a relief to me, I dreaded the probable prospect that my corpse was uncovered in that bathroom cabinet.